We need to get that to stop moving, don't we? Welcome back to the channel, you all. I appreciate you. And I mean, I've missed you. Have you missed me? I've missed you. Um, so, change of plans. I was going to go and uh, camp at, uh, do a backpacking trip up Zaleski and uh, go up there stay the night uh my the the kids and their mother they went out of town uh into pennsylvania for a wedding uh so i'm just here all by myself it's too quiet in this house so i was gonna go ahead and um, i was gonna get out of the house but uh things didn't go as planned so um my i coach baseball and the other assistant coaches and all that they they called in sick so i was going to call in sick they beat me to it so that's where we're at uh anyways i figured you know it's been a minute since we made a video i know trevin and i just did one a, a couple weeks ago so uh what we're gonna go ahead and do now is uh i'm just gonna do a gear check and i'm gonna do a couple of these this is my backpacking setup and it's not the best, it's not the most lightweight, it's not the cheapest, and it's definitely not the most expensive. Uh, it's just what I use, and so far it works pretty well. So, first things first, water setup. The most valuable thing that you are going to have out there on the trail is going to be water. You know, you can go a day or two, or even a, a week or two without food. Uh, you can literally just burn it, and I, especially if you're like me, you know, I, I've got some pounds that I could lose, obviously. Uh, maybe you're the same. Either way, you're not going to die if you don't have food for a day or two. You won't be comfortable, but you're going to survive. Without water, though, you will die. So here's my water setup, uh, and, and this is just kind of how I go after it in different... Uh, uh, depending on the campsite you go to, if you go to any of uh, any of the pull-up campsites here in Ohio, there's always going to be potable water somewhere around that you can use. And also you have your car so you can, you know, pile in, you know, gallon jugs of spring water or however you want to do, however you want to work that. When you're backpacking though, things get a little bit more dicey, especially on these primitive trails. Uh, now, Zaleski allegedly, and, I, and you kind of get conflicting reports, um, I'll just say, Zale I'll use Zaleski as an example. <clears throat> uh, there is supposed to, there are designated campsites, and there is supposed to be potable water on them. Uh, Zaleski was heavily mined back in the day, and the groundwater, though, uh, and this is the big but, but uh, Zaleski was heavily mined a long long time ago and the groundwater has a lot of heavy metals and stuff in it so heavy metals but uh the uh so the water that is potable there is trucked in now uh what if it's empty you don't know so i'll take something like zaleski and where they say they have water I'm not going to trust that. I mean, it'll be super convenient and awesome if it is there when I get there because I'm going to just chug my water. I don't have to think about anything else. Um, but I'm still going to pack in my water. So to do that, I just have a little igloo cooler. This is a half gallon. And uh, yeah, it's uh, this is just a, a half gallon igloo. I'll take that in, fill it with ice during the summertime add water to it, whatever, um, and pack it in. You will use it. Cooking, drinking, especially if you're bringing in, you know, a couple little kids or whatever, you know, you can't stick one of these on each one of them. It's just, these get, these are heavy. Uh, so you'll fill a water bottle, bring it in, and you're the pack mule. And I drink a lot of water anyway, because I'm a very sweaty, disgusting person when I'm out there hiking and acting. So, um, and then outside of that, on top of that, I'll bring my, just my little RAI water bottle. I'll fill this up, uh, and just, and this is what I'll strap to my backpack. So, so that's our, that's our water set up here. Um, oh, what's next? What 
to do next. So I've got my whole bag here. All right. This is my food, and this could really be anything, but um, mainly, you know, there's a whole bunch of, uh, I was packed up to go to Zaleski today, so what I have in here is a bunch, is a smorgasbord of MRE stuff, but if I was going to be using, you know, if I just needed a can of veggies, or I had other ingredients or anything, I would take it and I would stick it in this Kroger bag. And what happens is, is the Kroger bag, ends up being also my trash bag for the campsite uh, and it works well <clears throat> uh, you know you're not wasting any space everything that goes comes out of it goes back into it trash and whatever uh, carry a trash bag I mean when you're in a place where you can burn things that's great you can throw those paper plates or or whatever, you know, the, the paper towels and all that. You can throw that on the fire and that's all fine and dandy. But if you've got cans, bottles, or anything like that, um, bring yourself a trash bag, pack out your stuff. I don't want to see your trash on the trail. You don't want to see my trash on the trail. Nobody wants to see trash on the trail. So take a trash bag and get your stuff out of there. Uh, the next thing, not particular, this is just a little Ozark Trail mug. It's hot or cold. Uh, it has a little carabiner handle on it, so if I want to strap it on the outside of my pack, I can. Uh, sometimes I pack way too much stuff, especially if I'm bringing my kids, so I can snap this on there. Uh, this is also super lightweight, and both of my kids have one, so and I can strap this onto the back of their backpacks, and it works just fine. These, What I like most about this particular cup um, is just how like the lid like once it's on it doesn't pop off so what i'll usually do is um you know if i'm drinking tea i'll put my tea bags in there if i'm drinking coffee or anything else i'll just stuff it into here and uh, i imagine over time probably the lid gets loose just put a little piece of scotch tape on it and it'll keep it on there through the hike all right next up on the list our mess kit. Oh, I should probably aim this down just a little hair bit. All right, so my mess kit. This is again not something super fancy or crazy. Uh, first things first is I've got my my utensils, and these are just some little uh, light aluminum utensils. I'm sure you could find something that doesn't have, and they just kind of pop off here. There's a knife, you know, and there's my fork there's my spoon uh, and they have those plastic spork you know uh, with a little knife on the other end of it uh, that you can get and, and maybe that works better for you um, my thing is is I just have these so I, I use them they don't really weigh much so it's not like you know if I was packing into the you know backpacking the the uh, the Appalachian Trail or something I would probably find something different but for the time being these work all right then I got my cook set so what I I don't know I found that this thing here and I've got a couple of different cooking sets um, I found that this one works probably the best so it's got a lid obviously it's just a cooking pot and it does come with other little pots as well as like a little frying pan that fits on the bottom of it so i really recommend this uh this cook set here i don't know if it i don't have a brand name for it so you'll just have to figure that out on your own uh so in here in my cook set um i have a couple of i have a bunch of stuff so one thing i have fire starter um, I've got in just what I'm going to use to build a campfire with. I've got uh, one of the zip lights. And then I've also got uh, just sort of like a little emergency bag that just has uh, some dryer lint in it, along with some shredded card, like really skinny, thin, shredded cardboard, almost like gift box material. And this stuff makes really great fire starter in a pinch. So I, uh, I do that. I carry my extra pair of socks in here as well. Now, um, and I don't do that because this is the safest place for the socks. I do it because all this stuff rattles around and the rattling around annoys me. So I shove the socks in there and they kind of keep it all quiet and compressed together. 
a lighter, my uh, butane, and then my cooking stove. So, and I don't even remember what brand this was, but there's a thousand out there on Amazon that look like this. Um, it's basically just a little thing that you screw right onto the top of your, of your butane. Um, and then you just kind of stretch it out, one of the, like these little dealies here. And, uh, and you've got a nice little cooking stove. Uh, it does come with a starter and it does work really well, but I carry the lighter in there just in case. Uh, sometimes the little starter gets wet and uh, you know it's not as not as easy to uh, to get started. So I'm just gonna shove all this back together here and get it out of the way. All right, next up on the list, let me get that pothead out, that little thing out of here. Next up on the list, um, we're gonna kind of get into the whole. You know what? Let's do this first. Our tent. Now this is, uh, I, you know, I love these tents and I love the company. Uh, it's a small little company out of Washington, uh, the River Country Products. And they, the quality for the price is absolutely fantastic. Now this is not ultralight gear by any means at all. Um, this is a one man and it probably weighs, I think a little bit over two pounds. So it's not the heaviest, but it's also not the lightest. Uh, I and I really like their stuff. It's good quality. My only gripe with it is, uh, and, and it's it's sort of a good and a bad thing is uh, during the summer months when you're out there and it's you know a thousand degrees outside. It's good to get some airflow and ventilation moving through that tent. Um, these are only used typically two sided on ventilation. Whereas a lot of them out there, a lot of other tents out there will be four-sided. So all you have to really do to kind of get around that is just be conscious of where the wind is coming from and just make sure you're aiming your tent towards that way. That way the breeze is coming in and going out the other side. Uh, you're not going to get the, the or, you know, coming in the front, going out the rear. You're not going to get the side ventilation with these tents typically. At least not the ones that I have. I have a two-man and I have two of their one-man tents. And, and they're both sort of the same. But they're light, they're easy to set up, they're easy to break down, and like honestly, um, they, they set up, they don't, they, you get your guidelines and you get your tent stakes and you get the tent obviously. Um, but they don't have uh, they don't have tent poles. You don't have to worry about that. They just set up with a trekker uh, a trekker rod, a trekker pole. So these are and they're called trekker tents. Uh, the you know some of them take two of uh, two of the you know trekker poles. Um, the, the this one and the other uh, the other ones I have. Uh, my two man takes two. This one and the other one take one. So. If you use these, um, it's great. You know, dual purpose. You don't have to worry about anything else, and and you got your you got your business going on there. Let's set that off to the side. Here. All right, let's get into our sleep system. All right, next on the list here is uh, the Best Steam SA77 sleeping bag. Now this is sort of a this is more of a whoops this is more of a warm weather bag. I would put it at maybe like three seasons if they're the right part of those seasons. So, I don't know, maybe two season. Fantastic for summer, it's a stuff sack, so you don't even have to waste your time folding up the, the sleeping bag and then wedging it in there. No, you just take the sleeping bag, and just shove it back in there. Uh, until it's in there and then strap it shut and you're done. So really quick setup, really quick takedown. The, I was saying it's kind of like a two season tent. Um, it's perfect for summer, uh, but it would probably be good for late spring, um, mid to late spring, and then early to mid fall. Um, you could definitely use it in the full on fall, uh, but I would just make sure that you're, you know, that you're packing some thermals or something to put on yourself. Because uh, it, it's basically just a blanket at that point. Uh, it's, it's not going to keep you warm in sub-zero. So 
but this is what I was going to use today. Uh, the next thing for me, actually, let's let's grab our next video buddy here. Uh, my sleeping pad. So it is the fun pad. Because this thing is fun. It was super fun when I couldn't figure out how to do it or when I sat there for an hour pumping it up, uh, not realizing that the valve on the other side of it was like cracked open just a little bit and basically every bit of air I was putting in was slowly leaking out the back. So it's fun, it's real fun. Uh, but actually I do enjoy this because it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a good, it's really good size. So I'm a little bit taller, so this works really nice. Also what I, the thing that drew me to it in general was that um, once it's pumped up, it has like a little raised area, like a pillow on it. So, and that works really nicely if, if you don't want to bring a pillow in, you don't want to pack one in with the inflatables or anything else. Uh, you could actually just kind of use that as a little pillow and it, it actually would work pretty well. Uh, the first time I used this, my blow up pillow that I had kept in deflating. And I don't know if it had a hole in it, if it was just cheap and bad and whatever, uh, but it kept deflating. And, uh, but I wasn't totally miserable because this actually had a little pumped up uh, pillow on it that's kind of built into it. Um, it's also self-inflating. That doesn't mean that you just like, you know, set it down and it inflates itself. It's got a, a, a little air pump that you can, if you don't, maybe you don't have the lungs for it, uh, you know, maybe you have asthma or something and you're not really good at blowing things up. Um, it's got a little pump built into it. So you can just sit there and you can pump the thing up and it'll eventually inflate. Uh, just make sure you're closing the valves on all the ends. Uh, also, uh, you know, you, you can use your hands to pump it up or you could use your foot to pump it up. Or if you do have strong lungs, then just, you know, use your mouth. Uh, but uh, so I like these, they are a little bit bigger. It's not super heavy, but it does take up a lot of space. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's not the most compact. So we were talking about the fun pack and it's built in pillow. The next thing we're going to be getting into on the sleep system is the pillow. And this is the, this is a luxury item for me. All right. If the Avello pillow, I hate those. I, I do not like the little blow up camping pillows. I just don't like them. They're always either too hard or they're too soft. It's full of air, so things leak and they deflate and whatever. Um, I don't like them. I don't just need my head propped up by something. Uh, I can use a t-shirt or a pair of pants or something in a pinch. Um, but I want something like soft to lay my head on. And most of the blow up pillows that I've ever tried, they aren't it. This is it. This is my camping pillow. I don't have to blow it up. It's full of something, you know? I think this is like uh, little bits of foam or, or something rather, but uh, this, uh, you can unzip this, pull it out, wash the outside if you're a sweaty bug, you know, repellent mess. Uh, and uh, I don't know, this is my luxury item. I won't go camping without it, whether it's a pull up or whether I'm backpacking in there will always be a place in my pack for my pillow. And I love this pillow. And honestly, I, you know, I, I washed my, my, my actual pillows on my bed, in my bedroom, and I forgot that they were in there and they weren't dry and I was going to bed. And you know what I did? I went and I got this little pillow, I set it on my bed and I went to sleep on it. I'm really big on pillows. That is my luxury item. It doesn't weigh hardly anything but it takes up a lot of space. It does scrunch down, so if you really need to pack it up in there, you can, uh, but in general, it's just kind of big and unwieldy. I don't care, I love it. All right, from here, you know, we're getting into some other stuff. All right, let's see what we got. All right, something that I always take with me, and uh, it doesn't really even matter if it's winter or summer, uh, is I bring these, these little stick-on warmer packs. These are nice to have, especially if you have small children, because like I'm, 
I'm a, I'm a grown up and I've got like, you know, layers of fat and stuff like that on me. Uh, so I might not be cold, but they could be cold. Um, so I bring, I just pack a lot of these in with me, regardless of the season, regardless of where I'm going. I always bring these little guys, um, either for myself or especially if I have my kids with me, if they get cold, stick them on them. Uh, make sure you're sticking it on their clothing, you know, their, their first layer of clothing and not on their skin because they do get hot and they last a long time. I don't know, I think it says, uh, well, it says they last about 12 hours. I've only used them one time and it was when I was hunting and, uh, and they do last, uh, and they do last a long time and they do get very, very warm. So keep that in mind. Once you set them loose, you know, they're just, they're going to be warm. All right, let's see what else we have here. Okay, let me, uh, all right, so this is sort of my emergency stuff. And there's not like too many crazy things going, going on here in my emergency stuff. Uh, in my emergency pocket, I have a first aid kit, all right? So I don't care, you know, you can build your own. You can just buy the little pre-made ones at the store or on Amazon or on eBay or wherever you shop. Um, always bring one. Uh, it, they can be as crazy as you need them to be or uh, they can just be something super simple like this, which is just gonna be some bandages, some gauze. Uh, I believe there's some antibacterial stuff in here, uh, like Neosporin. And then uh, I, I'm, I think that there's uh, like some type of bug uh, anti-swelling thing in there as well. So bring one of these, uh, always bring a first aid kit. You never, you're marching around in the woods, you know, you're gonna get, you're gonna get uh, sticks scratching you or, or you, you know, heaven forbid you get a cut or whatever. Um, you need one of these. And this is just a little tiny thing. And again, it weighs nothing. So make sure you have at least something out there. Um, and then for me, in my little emergency pocket, I've got more fire starter and an extra lighter. And generally, I'll keep these in a, a little sandwich bag. Just in case it rains, they get, you know, they're, they're, I set my pack on something wet that it doesn't ruin them. So you always want uh, a way to build a fire if you need to. All right, so from there, uh, the next thing really on the list is uh, my hatchet. Uh, this is a Japanese Nata hatchet. Um, and these work really, really well. I've seen other folks use them on YouTube channels and I was super curious, so I got one of them. And I absolutely, uh, I absolutely love this thing. It's, it's not a big giant hatchet, um, and it, but it's super functional. You can use it to hammer in 10 stakes with the flat side. Uh, you can cut open bags. You could hack away at small trees. Uh, you can, you know, or small or even medium size. You can strip off branches, get all that dead wood and everything else. The only thing I didn't really like about this that I don't like about it is the sheath. Um, it's got like wood in here and I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, not, not really a big fan of the sheath. So that's going to be another thing that I do here in the near future is I'm going to teach myself some leather working and we're going to make a proper sheath for the Nata. I also didn't really like the, the, the finish that the handle came with. So I sanded it all down and I refinished mine myself. And then, um, you know, honestly, last but not least, uh, it's my pack. Uh, again, this isn't like the super lightweight. It's not the most expensive and it's certainly not the cheapest. Um, this is an Osprey, a 65 liter, uh, 65 liter pack. And I found that it works really well for all this gear. I can easily fit all this stuff in there. We even with a little room to spare. So you can put a lot of stuff in this. It's got a lot of packs. It's super comfortable. Uh, my back is like kind of messed up. 
uh, just years of not lifting things properly and everything else. Um, and this is really goes easy on my back. Uh, lots of spots where you can put on these little carabiners. And, uh, you know, that'll be the next thing I talk about here. I love this pack. I really enjoy it. It's super durable. Um, and it doesn't weigh a lot. Maybe this is probably like a, a four and a half or maybe five pound bag. Maybe four. Uh, but it, it's everything I need. And everything I need, everything else I need, fits in it really well. And there's not really a whole lot else from there. There's going to be other little incidentals in here. Oh, actually, now that I'm saying that, I'm thinking of stuff. All right, so now that we're getting into kind of like the incidentals, um, one thing, and I don't even necessarily call this an incident, the, a carabiner. Um, carry a couple of extras with you. They weigh nothing. They can clip anywhere on your backpack. Um, bring a couple of them with you. Uh, like, I have a couple of extras laying around in my pack, just sort of floating around, and I just randomly find them. Um, but, you know, you don't realize how much you need this until you need this. Uh, you know, like we talked about the bag of trash earlier, you know, stick your carabiner through there, put your trash on the back of your pack and carry it on out. Uh, especially if you have smelly trash or something, maybe you ate a can of tuna and you don't want it touching all your other gear. You know, keep it on the outside, use a carabiner to do it with. And have a couple of them spare. Have a couple spares in your pack. A light source. Generally, I don't like packing my anything. I don't want to show up at a campsite in the dark. Uh, now, I get it if you're hiking, you know, like the Buckeye Trail, the Appalachian Trail, and you, uh, you just don't have any choice. You know, you're banging it out. You're trying to crank out 20 mile hike in a day. Sometimes you just arrive at night. Uh, I don't like to do that. Uh, I want to show up during the day, so I'll even time everything to where there's plenty of sunlight for me to set up. That being said, though, maybe you get up and you need to leave early. You know, maybe uh, some, maybe you need to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you know. Um, carry a light source. Uh, these little headlamps, they work great. Um, I also carry extra batteries for them in my pack. Everything that I have, I carry a battery pack. Uh, I carry extra batteries for every piece of equipment, electronic equipment that I have. So uh, the GoPro, uh, every, everything that has a battery, I carry extra batteries for it. Uh, but carry a light source. You never know when you need it. And when you do need it, you know, you'll be happy you had it. Uh, if you don't have a light source and you got to, you know, call, nature calls to you at 3 a.m., uh, you're going to be real sad that you didn't have a light source. Uh, speaking of going into the bathroom, I just carry a little bit of toilet paper. Uh, just some little two-ply, you know, cheap little grocery store like the cheapest one that they have it scrunches down and you don't even have to I, I carry just the whole row because again it doesn't weigh anything hardly um, but you could even just pull off a length of it and put it in a ziplock or something and, and you'd be good to go uh, my ultimate comfort item and something that you you may not think you need but I'm here to tell you you do uh, it's just an old blank shop rag all right now this one's clean and everything uh they come in packs of 30 or 50 or something you can usually find them in the automotive section at every store everywhere whether it be walmart or meyer or or you know whatever the general store is in your town um bring one of these with you uh, you know, you get, you know, you're hiking out there, you're going to get sweaty, you're, you know, and at the end of the day, when you're getting ready to crawl into your sleeping bag, get some water, whether it be from a stream or a lake or even just your water bucket, get this wet, give yourself a real quick, you know, hobo shower and then crawl into your bag. You're going to feel a lot better about yourself, um, you know, getting all that oil and sweat and bug spray and 
every other thing that you've gotten all over your face and your neck and your arms and all over yourself all throughout the day, uh, trudging through the forest, wipe it all off, bring one of these little rags. And like I said, they're super plentiful. These are just shop rags that you can get in any automotive section anywhere. And they come, they're super cheap. They come in a giant pack. So even when you're done, uh, throw it on the campfire, throw it in the trash, or take it home, throw it in your laundry, and wash it and use it again. So I definitely recommend uh, bringing a little rag like this. But folks, um, that really is my setup for for my average little backpacking trip here. Uh, there'll be a couple of other little random items I'll bring. Um, uh, you know, stuff, you know, my wallet, obviously, and all that. But uh, generally, this is all that I bring. This is all that I found that I need. Uh, and it's pretty, it's a pretty simple setup. My pack doesn't weigh a thousand pounds. Honestly, the only thing that ever really makes my pack weigh a lot is uh, the water. So if you're going to a pull-up campsite, obviously, you don't need to pack in water. If it's a place that guarantees that there's a fresh well there with potable water, uh, definitely uh, just, you know, roll with that. Uh, and, uh, uh, and and that's really it. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bummed I didn't get to, didn't get to go out camping uh, today. But, you know what? Whatever. You know, there'll always be, uh, there'll always be another day. The outdoors aren't going anywhere and... Uh, We'll get after it some other time. So, but I appreciate, as always, everybody, I appreciate you watching. Um, you know, make sure you like and, and like the video and hit the subscribe button. Uh, I don't have any special, uh, I don't have any scheduled release dates or anything like that. I, but I do like to put these videos out there uh, when I get an idea. So, but until next time, you all.